Hi, this is Adam from Inflectra, and in today's video, we're going to be learning about how to schedule tests using the test sets functionality of SpiraTest. So the first thing we need to do is log into SpiraTest using the administrator account. And if you haven't changed the password, please do so. And when you first come into SpiraTest, we're going to need to choose the sample application too. And in our previous videos, if you've been in this series already, you'll know we've actually already created our requirements and test cases. So just to review that, if you go into the home page, you'll see we've got seven requirements in the requirements coverage tab showing not run, which is what we'll be doing today. And if you go in the test execution graph, you'll see we have four test cases also not run. And we've already created two releases, release 1.0 and 2.0, and we're going to be using release 1.0 to do our testing. And just to recap, if you go into the planning requirements section, you'll see these are our requirements. The gray bars indicate that nothing has yet been executed, but there are tests linked to them. And if we go into the testing section, you'll also notice we do have four test cases in the functional test section as well. So to run test cases, you can actually assign the test cases directly to a tester. Uh, you just choose the owner name and add that value. Um, but in, in many places, for a larger project, you will often want to use test sets. So I'm going to show you that feature today. A test set is a way of packaging together the tests and assigning them in one group. So I'll go to test cases, either on this navigation or under testing test sets. And test sets also live in folders in the same way that test cases do. So I'll create a simple folder for today called test cycle one. And again, you can create as many folders as you like. You can create as many levels of folders as you like. I'll choose test cycle one. Okay, so let's create a new test set and we'll call it you know, testing version 1.0. And we'll change the release to version 1.0. In fact, we'll specify it's the whole functionality, not just a sprint. We could just test the sprint and then we might choose just the iteration of sprint instead. Hit save, there's our test set. And right now when we click on it, uh, it's gonna basically open up the test set detail page. And if we click on the overview tab, you can see all the various attributes. We'll come back to that in just a second. There's also a description box. If you want to write a description for the test set describing what it's testing, feel free to do that. It isn't required and I'm actually not gonna do that today. And then under that, we now add our test cases. So let's go into add and to keep things simple, I'm just going to add all four test cases in our folder. On a much larger project, you might be assigning a subset of your entire test plan to specific users. And so you could have different test sets to do that. But so for right now, I'm going to assign all four test cases to the current user. So hit save. I've now got a test set with all four tests. And if I go in and choose the owner, I'll choose me, system administrator, because I'll be the one running the test. And it's a manual test case, so I'll leave that. And the other thing is I can set a plan date. So I will tell myself it should be run by tomorrow. I can also set a time if I want. So maybe it's say, I went done by nine o'clock in the morning. Like that, good. And then I hit save. And when I hit save, it's gonna send an email to me letting me know I have a test set. And if I go back to my My page, I will see my assigned test set right here. So let's go ahead and actually run the test set. So I click on execute, the little play button, and it's gonna walk me through my test cases in my set one by one. So uh, we've got the release 1.1 chosen for me, and that's perfect. If I had not chosen the release in the test set, then I would have the option to choose it. But because the test manager has chosen the release for me, it's automatically set. And what you'll see now are my test cases. The first three test cases only have the one default step, and the last one has that three steps that I created. Now you'll notice that the order here doesn't actually make a lot of sense. The ability to edit, then delete, then edit, then add. In my test set, I can reorder the test cases. So before I do this, I'm gonna go back and just do a little reordering because I think it makes more sense to create the user first. So we'll go back here, and I'll go in here and I'm gonna take the add user, and I'm gonna move that to the top. And then the edit is good. Delete is good, edit notifications, that's perfect. That order makes a lot more sense. So if I go ahead, back to my My page, and you'll see my assigned test set, hit run, hit next again, and now I'm gonna see it in the right order. Perfect. So the first one is to click on a link to create a new user. So let's pretend that passes. Second step, enter the name of the email address and password of the user. Hit pass. The third option is to click a button Let's pretend it didn't work it through an error. So what we'll need to do is put a screenshot in of the error and what happened. So we'll say, did not work, displayed a 404 page not found error. And I don't have an actual screenshot of that, so I'm just gonna paste in my current screen. So I'm gonna hit print screen on my keyboard, hit paste, and there's my screenshot. 
Very nice. So what I do now is before I hit the fail button, I am going to just check and see, has someone logged a defect already? Well, no one's logged a defect yet. It's a brand new step. It's a brand new test case. So I'm going to log a defect. I'll be the first one to do that. So there is a missing page on the user creation screens. Choose bug, choose priority high, and leave the rest. We hit fail, and that's going to fail the step. It went red, the red block, red cross, that goes red, and it logs a defect. And if you want to go back, you can click on it, and you'll see the defect and the results. So you can always review what you've done. And for the next test cases, I'm going to go ahead, and because I can't actually edit a user, because I can't create one, that's an example of a block test case. So I'll say blocked by edit failure. And I'll do that for both that one and the delete, because I can't delete something if I can't create it. So blocked. The last test case is to edit notifications. Now that's independent of creating a user, so I'll say pass, and that's good. So I've basically passed one test case, blocked two, and failed one. You'll notice the color bars at the top show that as well. And you can click on those to navigate as well. I am done, so I can hit the finish button, which is the orange square, hit that. It's going to tell me that once I do this, I can't make any more changes to the test run of it. And that's fine. Say so, OK. And if we go back to testing test cases, we will see we have four test cases and the execution status has changed from not run to fail, blocked, passed, and blocked. If I go to my test set view, I will see the same thing. This test set has four cases. And if I click on it, you'll see they're in, this, in the same status as two. Fail, blocked, blocked, passed. And then lastly, we'll go into the planning requirements section and see that the requirements have also been updated. And if you go to functional requirements, you can see the aggregate status of all the test cases as they relate to the different requirements. At a higher level, you can see in graphical form here. Here's my requirements coverage graph. Nothing's no longer not run. All my requirements have got tests, but one has passed, one has failed, and two are blocked. And the reason why the count there is three and not two is because we also have the parent requirement, which inherits some of the status of the child requirements. You'll also see in this date range graph, my activity progress. And the same thing here in my test case progress too. And you can also see the same results release by release in the test status graph and the release test summary. So now we've logged our test results. Um, the next thing we'll be doing in the next video is going to be triaging the defect, fixing the defect, and then retesting the test case and passing it. So if you'd like to see that, please go to the next video in our series. And if you like these videos and you'd like to see more videos on test management using SpiraTest, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching.